Hello friends. Today I am coming to you from my orange couch. <laughs> if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll remember this from the early days of the channel. I love this thing, but I don't love why I'm sitting on it today. I have managed to get a bulging disc in my lower back, which is compressing a nerve root in such a way that I have pretty much been in bed or at the doctor for the last three weeks. I do have a surgical consult and I may need to get a relatively minor surgery. It's a bummer. And this year has been downright weird for me because I've had three injuries. I think I'm getting old, <laughs> but anyway, I'm doing my best to get some work done. I do have one video I'm already filmed from before I got hurt. It has to do with how I decide how I purchase my gear. And I use the Nikon Z30 as a case study. And I do have some video ideas for the rest of the year that I'll be able to do from home. So you'll still be getting videos. But anyway, last month, Raymond and I shared a video where we discussed the gear we want to see in 2023, both real gear and gear that we just completely made up. And I will link to that video in the description of this video. But when we were brainstorming for that video, we kept coming up with features that we'd like to see in cameras, but things that aren't specific to any one camera or any one brand. So in this video, I'll share those. I'd love to have Raymond here with me, but unfortunately he's picking up all of the slack with family duties since I've been out of commission. So he's too busy to sit here with me to film this video. I do have his ideas here, so I will share them. Plus, we asked you all about features that you would like to see, and you all had some great ideas, so I will share those today as well. Before I get into that, though, I'd like to thank KEH for sponsoring this portion of the video. KEH is the original e-commerce company, meaning that they buy and sell used gear. I adore KEH. I've been working with them for years and I've been a customer for even longer. There are two main reasons I personally love them so much. Number one, when I want to sell gear that I'm no longer using, KEH's process is ridiculously easy and completely transparent. Gear that previously would have simply sat on my shelves actually gets sold so that I have more room and some extra cash. And the second reason that I love them is why I shop there. They handle their gear with care. Their experts thoroughly inspect and grade every item. They list that grade for each piece of gear and what that grade means on their site so that I know exactly what I'm getting. Plus, they have a huge inventory, all different brands and all different kinds of items like cameras and lenses, but also bags and tripods and lighting. My good experiences with KEH is what has led me to continue working with them and has made me comfortable recommending them to you. And right now they are offering a special discount for the holidays. Starting today, you can get 10% off of nearly everything on the site. I have a link to KEH and a code for that 10% off for you in the description below. That's also an affiliate link. When you use that link, it tells KEH to keep working with us. And it also uh, earns me a small commission, which helps me continue creating videos for free for you on this channel. So thank you to those of you that use those links and thank you to KEH for continuing to support this channel. And if you do use that discount code, tell me what you're picking up. I wanna hear all about it, <laughs> but okay. On to the main event the camera features. I feel like I've been talking for an hour and we haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet. Okay. The first thing on my list is one that Raymond actually brought up, and this is a technical one and it has to do with shooting video. So all my still photographers out there, bear with me. This is the only video specific feature that I will talk about today. Raymond wants to be able to capture video in 4k at any digital zoom crop factor. Right now, many cameras have sensors that contain more pixels than 4K video requires, so you're only using a portion of your camera's sensor. Raymond wants to be able to digitally zoom in, meaning not optically zoom in with a lens, but digitally zoom in using more of the camera sensor and still be able to shoot in 4K. Right now, some full-frame cameras allow you to maintain 4K or even 8K shooting in the APS-C sensor format, which is essentially that digital zoom that Raymond is looking for. 
And I used the Sigma FPL a while back that actually offers a few digital zoom levels. So it's getting closer to this idea that Raymond has, but he wants all of the flexibility to shoot 4K at any digital zoom, at least up to the camera's full sensor. And this might be handy for any number of reasons. If you're capturing something far away, like maybe wildlife, you can optically zoom in to the extent that your lens allows, and then use the digital zoom to get that much tighter into the subject. Or it just gives you more flexibility with whatever lens you have on your camera, no matter where you are. I have been shooting in 8K on my Nikon Z9 and simply cropping the video in post if needed because I master my videos for uploading in 4K. So I do like the idea of the digital zoom. And I think I even called it out in the FPL video that I did. And I think I did a demo of it. So if you're curious about it, I will link to that video in the description. Okay, moving on. Here is one that Raymond and I have been talking about for years. We want to see camera bodies making a jump forward in technology on the body itself. Specifically, the screens on cameras haven't changed very much other than maybe having a higher resolution. So we would like to see things such as touch screens being more responsive, like phones are today. And what we'd like to see even more is changing labels on the buttons. Raymond has talked about wanting e-paper buttons so that the buttons, the labels on the buttons actually change when you change the function of the button, like kind of like how my newer loop deck consoles do. With the gear that I use the most often, I definitely know the buttons and dials by heart, but especially when Raymond uses something, he might change a function button. And then the next time I use that piece of gear, I am all out of sorts. So it would be nice to see how things are set simply by looking at the buttons rather than searching through multiple menu items. And speaking of menus, this is a feature that I've been wanting for basically forever. I wanna be able to completely customize my menus. And I know I'm not the only one out there because a viewer named Glenn suggested it as well. I, we <laughs> want to be able to basically plug my camera into my computer and then open up some utility and be able to make the menus organized how I want them organized, rather than only having the my menu or the favorites menu to customize. Next, along the same lines of customization, I want a modular camera, kind of like the Sigma FPL or kind of like some of Hasselblad's cameras where you can have different modules that you can put together in whatever way is best for you. Like if you're a left-handed person and a left-eyed person and you want the viewfinder and the grip to be switched to the other side of the camera, wouldn't that be interesting? I mean, we already have things like add-on electronic viewfinders sometimes and battery grips. This would really just be taking that a step further. And I promised Raymond that I would tell you that he would like for, instead of a battery grip, a flattery grip, where your camera compliments you every time you take a photo. <laughs> And I mean, really, I spend a lot of money on my camera. I keep it clean. I keep it safe. I keep its battery all charged up. And, you know, really the least it could do would be to give me a little positive reinforcement. Am I right? <laughs> okay, building off of that. I've talked to hundreds of people in my years since creating this channel. And so many of you have a limitation of one kind or another. You have limited use of one of your arms or one of your hands. You have a bum shoulder. You're physically shaky. I wanna see more accessibility features. And I do think that some of the things that I've just mentioned, like a modular camera body or customizable menus and the e-paper buttons would be helpful, but there are things that Raymond and I have discussed, like, like why couldn't there be something like the Xbox accessible controller, which has some really thoughtful modifications that make it easier for people with different abilities to use. I think it would be neat. That might require, however, the next thing on my list, <laughs> which is that I want the camera apps to be a lot better, like a lot, a lot. And that includes our cameras connecting to our phones or maybe some kind of accessible controller more quickly and much more reliably. I mean, 
Some apps are certainly better than others, but there isn't one that gives me the flexibility to control everything I want to control from the app without a ridiculous delay, without losing connection. And some of the apps seem to be pretty arbitrary and what you can and can't adjust in the app. Like, why won't it let me use anything other than auto white balance in one? Or why can't I use fully manual mode in another? I generally use the app for capturing video of myself like I am now. I want to change the settings and monitor what's going on as I shoot. And Raymond actually suggested a completely detachable LCD screen. Like instead of an app on my phone, I would just take the LCD screen off the back of my camera. I think that's a recipe for disaster because you know that thing would get lost in like the middle of the desert or something. But Oh, here's another one. Raymond also mentioned wanting 5G in the camera, so your photos are already on your computer by the time you get back home, which would be cool, but probably also pretty pricey when you consider the file sizes that we're dealing with on newer cameras, especially with video. Oh, and speaking of which, viewers Rick and Rob mentioned that they want to easily transfer photos from their camera to their phone and you can do that using most newer cameras using camera apps. But as I discussed just a moment ago, these apps need better reliability. And I think it was, yeah, Rick also said that he wants to be able to do some minimal editing of photos in the camera. And some cameras do that, but you're right, Rick, not all of them have that option. And then Mario said that he would like a hybrid exposure like they do in phone cameras. And by that, I think he means that phones today do some processing on the image so that you maintain detail in the highlights and shadows, which you can sort of do if you're shooting in JPEG and using things like highlight and shadow optimizers in the camera. But this idea, what some people are calling computational photography is certainly interesting. And I know so many of you out there would like to see it in your camera bodies because so many of you don't want to edit your images at all. You want to use them straight out of the camera. Okay. David and Steve, and I think one or two other people, plus Raymond, they want some security features built in, like with our phones, where if we lose them, we can locate them and lock them down so that no one can use them. And with cameras already having GPS so that the camera can tag images with coordinates, this doesn't seem like too much of a stretch. I mean, I guess you could pay for this in the same subscription you're paying for your photos to upload directly from your phone to the cloud, like I told you earlier that Raymond wants. In the video where I asked you for your thoughts on features you want to see, I gave the example of camera battery that you can simply plug into power with a USB-C cable instead of using the battery charger. There's a company that makes these for some cameras, but someone mentioned in the comments that it would be wasteful to have the charging components in the battery itself. And I truly don't know the merits of that, but it did make me think about another sort of feature. I would like to see the electronics industry on the whole move toward being more environmentally conscious. And by that, I mean, maybe more recycled components in cameras, but I know that recycling isn't the solution that we all once thought. So better yet, I thought of my ultimate feature related wish for next year. I would like to see more meaningful firmware updates for current bodies rather than new camera bodies being released every year or two. As it stands, camera companies are releasing new camera bodies with increasing frequency. And sometimes the upgrades from their predecessors aren't that substantial. I would definitely like to see the camera companies hold off on releasing new bodies until there is a truly significant hardware update. That way we have less waste because we're purchasing fewer cameras. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I like KEH so much. It is a place where used gear can be rehomed instead of collecting dust on a shelf or being tossed into a landfill while still more gear is made and put out into the world. There were definitely more features <laughs> that viewers suggested. There were definitely more features that Raymond and I thought of. I mean, some were pretty silly, like I wanted my camera to smell like lavender <laughs> so that I'm always calmed by the scent of it. 
<laughs> or Raymond wanted his camera to do a sensor wet clean by itself, <laughs> which is an interesting thought. Like, would you have to refill it in a reservoir and empty another one with the cleaning fluid? <laughs> He also said he wanted the camera to make a sound like a squeegee as it's cleaning itself so he knows it's working. <laughs> but let's bring this home so that we can all grab our cameras and take some photos this weekend. Except for me, because I'm pretty much stuck here on the orange couch until I crawl my way back into bed. Take some photos for me this weekend, will you? <laughs> Something that I noticed as I read through suggestions and as Raymond and I talked about it is that most reusability features I think I only saw one comment mentioning megapixels. No one brought up frames per second or really almost any other technical specification. I mean, of course, I think we all want autofocus features to continue to be developed and for low light performance to continue to get better. And let's face it, it's fun to think about all of the gear that we might want or all of the features we'd like to see on future cameras, but I really just want more time out with my camera, any camera. And I know I said this recently in a video, but I'll say it again. It's unbelievable, the capability of cameras today. They are each amazing in their own way. And I'd be happy to shoot with any camera that's on the market right now. Thank you to those of you that commented with your wants for camera features. I'm always interested to hear what different photographers find valuable in gear. We're all a little bit different, or sometimes a lot different, actually, in what we want. <laughs> of course, if you have other ideas for us, leave them in the comments below. Thank you to KEH for continuing to partner with this channel. Remember, I have links for you in the description. That 10% discount is only available for a limited time. And one more thing, thank you for watching. <laughs>